Good evening and welcome to Tribute Time. Tonight, revolutionary French composer we celebrate. On his 147th birthday, Claude Debussy, born in 1862 for a humble household in the town of Saint Germain en Laye. Akio Claude Debussy's musical prowess was soon discovered by his first piano teacher. Debussy nurtured his talent at the tender age of 10 at the Paris Conservatory, where he studied for 10 years. After failing two examinations, his dream to become a prodigal pianist died. The road of composition was open to him after winning at the, the Prix de Rome in 1883 and 1884, allowing him to study at the Villa de Medin for three years. Here he was really able to free music. Even at the conservatory, Debussy was shocking tutors with his new harmonies, highly influenced by Eric Satie and Fauré, and somewhat spasmodically, Wagner. Whilst working as a household pianist in 1879 for the wealthy Madame Nadeza Vilatovna von Meck, Claude Debussy attended his first operatic performance which inspired a new perspective. The 1890s passed, and with it, many pieces were completed. Last but not least, Pilias and Misalunde. This was his masterpiece, and it catapulted Debussy into the limelight. And rightly so. It took him ten years. He travelled all over Europe conducting his works and establishing himself as a critic. Eventually, even his work started to become a satirical reference to his previous influences as he became more astute and original. He was linked to many, sometimes dubious and other suicidal women, and married Emma Bardock, his second wife. The children's corner suite was dedicated to their child, Claude Emma. Between 1903 and 1913, he created two books of images and two books of preludes. And much was influenced by other mediums. For example, his first orchestral work, Prelude of the Afternoon of a Fawn, was based on Marla May's poem of La Play Midi Don. World War I in 1914 caused a lull in Debussy's repertoire, deadened by the ravages of cancer. By this time, much of his impressionistic work was complete, but his pieces were much like the artworks of the period too, free-formed and full of powerful rhythms and dynamics, using subtle melodies often lost within layers. His piano play technique revolutionized playing, and experimenting in tone and color and harmony are still being used today, including chords created long before the jazz period. His entire work often appeared improvised. Debussy died in 1918 during the last German events in Paris. Today, his work influences neo-tonal composers and his pieces endure ongoing popularity. He pushed the limits of music and found new heights. Good night, Claude Debussy, and au revoir.